<laughs> yeah, you golden. The more you do it, the more you do it. Oh. And then obviously having a little bit of knowledge helps you. Higher? Yes. I like it like that, and Ruth likes it like that. Oh. So somewhere in the middle. <laughs> You're coming too. From Washington State to now sunny California. We've been at it for five years. It began with selling our previous boat and taking that money to buy tools and build a shed. We assembled keel pieces, poured the ballast, and raised all 16 frames in the first six months. There's a boat in there. Now, half a decade later, and at a slower but steady pace, we're in the water. We're salt and tar, and this is our life. Like, subscribe, and support if you can. Last time, Garrett did his first solo welding project, the hinging bracket for our bowsprit. The whole thing kind of just bowed in like that on me. Being a novice, it wasn't perfect. We called on our welding guru for some tips of the trade. A tutorial on heating and cooling metal. That should move Whoa. down. Yeah, that's moving so quick. Right, I'm just heating that to the Now I'm going to move it down a little bit. If I quench this with water, uh -huh. I can get that to move and stay. Wow. And the same thing here, if I moved it to the side, it would move that way mm -hmm. or that way. Because uh -huh. you're heating, it expands it, mm -hmm. and then you, you cool it real quick, it contracts it. Uh -huh. And that's the heating and cooling. Huh. So that's basically what I wanted to show you. Yeah. So you have to take that into consideration when you're when you're putting joints together mm -hmm. and how you're putting them together and when you're welding. Mm -hmm. Like that bracket that I built on the last episode. Because that would should I have braced it or should I have just done something differently? That's I would have absolutely put in some sort of a, a spacer. Mm -hmm. And you could have even shimmed it mm -hmm. up on the top okay. to wherever. But the other part of that is well, after you weld it, then you can do what they call stress relief. Uh -huh. So you, you weld it and it shrinks it in. So uh -huh. it does this, right? Yeah. So you had a bracket in between. Had, so it was mm -hmm. like a big H. Yeah, exactly. Right. Now, was it all the same material thickness? Um, no, it was 3 8, three eighth and quarter inch, the plate okay, in the middle. Okay, so the... the, the so the, the plate in the middle, so the, that's not really going to move that much. The 3 8 plates, yeah. they, they probably did this. Yeah, exactly. So what you could, could have done is if you put a spacer mm -hmm. on each, each end or mm -hmm. in, in the middle, let's uh -huh. say, it would have clamped that spacer in there uh -huh. because it, it did this. Yeah. So what you do by stress relieving is you take a torch and you heat up the backside. Okay. And just let it cool. Okay. You just get it nice and red hot mm -hmm. on both sides. And you'd literally, once it cools, the spacers would just fall. Huh. They would just, because you're stressing, you're, you're, you're taking all that stress that, because when you weld it on this side, it's trying to do this. Mm -hmm. Ralph also wanted to try out our new welder. When we first got it, I got to try it. It's really cool. So it's just a regular 110 welder. Mm -hmm. DC. Yeah. Well, I haven't stick welded in years, so don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's so tiny. It looks it looks bigger on the videos. It's so <laughs> tiny. <Yeah. laughs> I don't see anything wrong with it. most of any of these welds. This one's a little cold right here. Ralph looked over Garrett's test plate. Then we put the little welder through its paces. Well, here, you put on your helmet, I'll put on my helmet. <laughs> Make sure we have ground right here. 
Let me see, I haven't done this forever, so let's, let's try this. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little whip action here. Let's see. See how close I'm keeping the uh, the arc. Hey, look at that! It's peeling right off. <laughs> this is way different than the um, 6013 that I remember. Yeah. Not bad for an old guy that hasn't nice. done it for years, huh? No, that's beautiful. <laughs> let's, try, let's try some of the 718. Oh, great. <laughs> This should be much more difficult. Grasshopper. Yeah, look at that slag, came out perfect. Yeah. All right. Look at the difference in the slag. Can you see that difference? Yeah. Here, you know. this, is, this is great. I mean, sweet. I, I would stick with the, the, the 332nd, absolutely. Okay. Um, the only thing, and oh, I, I haven't even fucked with the amperage. Let me just look it up all the way. I just want to see. Cool. I just popped my circuit breaker. <laughs> I, just, I just popped my whole circuit breaker. Or did the power go out? Did I just pop my circuit breaker? I thought I heard it pop. Yeah, it sounded like it. I've, I've never had that with that. That's weird. <laughs> I've never had that with that. So it shows you how much amperage this thing's pulling. Maybe we'll just turn that down a little bit. Huh. Okay, so I did a little weave from about here on. I did a little bit of a weave. Okay. And you can see it, like, right from there. God, totally. That, that, that just, that amazes me. I am so impressed with this little machine. Awesome. I really am, dude. This is like... Here, you try some of the Sin 18. Okay. If he gets this, if he strikes this arc with no problem, I'm gonna have a hissing fit. <laughs> Damn, you got that arc started right away. <laughs> Try and get that, yeah, very in there, just like that, yeah. You can slow down a little bit. Okay. That's a good looking weld right there, I can tell you that already. Yeah, your arc length is good, Garrett. Not, there's I, nothing I can say that you did wrong there, except you were going a little even, fast. A little fast okay. to begin, and you'll see what I'm talking about as soon as, as soon as we get this, the flux off. You'll see, you'll see what, what I'm talking about. God, this, everything about everything is just like way better. Yeah, you were going a little bit fast right okay. here. Yeah, I've, I've, I think that's one of my consistent problems welding. I tend to go a little too fast. Um, it, I think that's natural. Okay. I really do. I think that's natural. It's easier to slow down than it is to speed up, I think. Okay. There ain't a damn thing wrong with that weld. Hell yeah. Awesome. And especially with this little <laughs> tiny machine. You just continue to do what you're doing. You know, okay. just burn rod. Yeah. The, they used to come in 50 pound boxes like this. <laughs> and I would burn, in welding school, I would burn a 50 pound box in a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's like eight hours of welding. Yeah, this. I'm really amazed. We've been so fortunate to have Rolf's knowledge and expertise. His shop's in Sonoma, California, and if you're looking for a damn good welder, I've put his info in the description down below. Slow down just a little bit. Okay, shorter. There you go. The arc was a little long at some okay. points. He started speeding up there a little bit. Yeah. I saw that. But other, other than that... Yeah, I need to... Brace myself up better. Holy crap! Man, I did wrong with that. <laughs> Son of a. I was kind of hoping you f***ed that all up. <laughs> Here, that looks great, buddy. Awesome. That looks great. I mean, this is where you sped up, right there. Mm -hmm. When I said slow down. Yeah. And then look at when when you slow down. And you had, and by this point, you already got a lot of heat in there. Uh huh. Right. Look at look at how much burn. Same as mine. Mm hmm. Right. So. You you were going perfect. This section in here is absolutely perfect. Okay. Between here and here. And then you sped up that little bit. 
Mm -hmm. So you slow down, and you might have slowed down just a little too much. Okay. You want to try one? I'll try. I should probably do. Yeah. You need to put. Yeah. Clothes on. Yeah. Clothes on. Slow down, Ricky. Slow down. No, don't stop. <laughs> Just slow down. Okay, and then you can come off. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Yeah, not that far off. Just like that. Perfect. A little bit, a little closer, a little closer. A little closer. Slow down. There you go. Look at the puddle. Slow down. You guys drunk. You guys drunk water, boss. Drunk water. Drunk welders. <laughs> She's got a drunk welder going on. Look at this. She's all over the place. <laughs> all right. Garrett definitely wins this. Yes. <laughs> that was Garrett. number one. Yeah. Okay. I know. I know exactly what your issue is. I know exactly what your issue is. Well, I kept forgetting that this is disappearing. That's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say. You were trying to hold it. Like, you were trying, oh, shit. It's like a TIG welding. You hold the TIG steady and you add the rod. Yeah. And that you had an issue with before. And so this you have to you have to keep you have to yeah. pay attention to the arc itself. Yeah. That's why I said I kept yelling, "Just slow down, watch the arc." Uh. It's because this this thing is getting shorter. <laughs> That's funny. It's like chasing the arc around. A couple more tries, but man, stick welding was hard. Maybe I'll leave that one to Garrett. <laughs>
let's kind of lift it and just start walking the, the nose of the bowsprit down. Okay. And then get it kind of halfway down. I'll, maybe I'll have you jump down there because that's the lighter end. Okay. And then I'll stay up here with the butt of the bowsprit and the bolt. And then I'll pin it. Okay. Right now, I can't hoist much higher because the the Kronz iron isn't attached to the end of the bowsprit, so it'll just slip off. But the what? Oh, the fitting on the end of the bowsprit that's not actually attached. Yeah, I think it should be at least that high. Crazy daddy doing, Swam. Oh, an inch, just an inch. <gasps> it doesn't even look good. <laughs> no, it looks like stupid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's stupid high. Look at that.
that's pretty smooth. Damn right, it's pretty Look smooth. at that. And then we would either tie it like back to the pin rail or a cleat somewhere. Yeah, well, we'll have the halyard uh, to lift it in the future. And the halyards are gonna be on blocks for the, the head sails. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, once it's up, we'll yeah, just put it around a blank pin or whatever. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, that's the right angle. <laughs> Alright, it's high enough, Garrett. It looks like a third mast. Alright, sweet. Job all done. Let's go see it. <laughs> so would you mind walking everybody through how the bowsprit's going to be attached and wow. like what we'll have to loosen up to lift it? On this fitting right here, that's where our bob stay will go, which will either be a cable or a chain that'll go out to the end of the bowsprit with the turnbuckle. And then there's going to be two more steel plates that we still need to make that will come back however far, but probably around here or so. The plate bolted through the planking with a tang on it. And block and tackle or turnbuckles, whatever, um, cables or chain will go out on both ends of the bowsprit. Those are the whisker stays. And that whole big mess will have a big jib net, like a, like a big hammock. Um, made out of uh, three strand and it's functional it holds like if you're dropping head sails or whatever underway you just dump them into the jib net and it'll hold it and then you can mess around with it and secure it and everything um, it's also awesome to lay in it <laughs> while you're at anchor or while you're sailing pretty much the whole idea of this is I don't want it to be like like it's this easy thing that we can just go pop the bowsprit up in five minutes to, uh, to come to a dock because we don't want to spend too much time at docks. And once we go sailing, we want to be living on our anchor, traveling, constantly moving. That's the way we've always done it before. Um, and so we don't have to, we don't care if there's 10 and a half extra feet off the bow of the boat. We're not paying slip fees. I want to still have all the, the gear and the jib nets and all the stuff up here. And the only reason that we would hinge it is say if we're somewhere in the world and we want to put the boat up for a few weeks or a few months or whatever, go back home, visit family, what have you. We could take a couple hours, de-rig everything, and then we could hoist the bowsprit up for putting her putting Red Aviva on a dock for a lengthy period of time to save us money. But that's not going to be the norm. The norm is we'll be living on our own anchor, so we won't have to worry about our overall length. But we just, since the bass spray is so long, we want to have the option to be able to, to hoist it up, to hinge it and have it out of the way. So when we do want to bring it up, we would loosen the block and tackle on the whisker stays. Mm -hmm and the bob stay that goes out to the end of the bow sprit and we yeah. would lift it up with the halyard for yep. what the jib probably yeah. the jib and the so staysail halyard i think i'll most likely have the whisker stays on block and tackle that way you can basically just lean over pop them loose you don't have to take them off just loosen them bob stay i'll probably just have on a turnbuckle and then you'll just walk out to the end of the bow sprit reach down i'll just have it on an open hook turnbuckle probably and then just loosen the turnbuckle a little bit, pull that off, come back, just hook it back here. Well, we might actually have to do it from the dinghy, now that I think about it, and we might have to disconnect it from down here and pull that up, because then the whole jib net can kind of just collapse with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'd be a good And we idea. wouldn't have to derig the jib net, and then we just hoist it up on a halyard. And then we'd probably just like lash the jib net around the bowsprit and, uh, just so if there's any wind or anything. We'll, have, we'll figure out 
the process once we're there. Yeah. It's all just theory right now, but that's the gist of it anyway. <laughs> There's still many things left to figure out on board Red Aviva, most of which we agree upon. Make the decision on the final angle of the sprit, because I like it like that, and Ruth <laughs> likes it like that, so somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but she's coming along nicely. Thanks for watching, everyone. Put it in the sun, give it some water. <laughs> <laughs>